I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update from Monday, February the 25th, 2013. Clashes between Palestinians and Israeli security forces continue today across the West Bank, and a 13-year-old Palestinian boy was seriously injured during confrontations with IDF forces in Bethlehem when Palestinians hurled makeshift bombs at the IDF, who responded with crowd dispersal means. There are conflicting reports as to how the teen was hurt. Ynet reported the IDF saying the teen was hit by army fire. The Jerusalem Post reports that the IDF did not use live fire during the riots. Earlier this evening, an IDF soldier suffered minor injuries from stone throwing in Beit Umar in the West Bank. He was treated by medics on site. And most recently, Ynet reported that a five-year-old Israeli boy sustained light injuries when he was hit by stones thrown at him near Beitar Elite, also in the West Bank. He was also treated on site and then sent to the hospital. As you may have seen on IBA News, Palestinian riots intensified over the weekend following the death of Palestinian inmate Arafat Jaradat in an Israeli jail on Saturday. Jaradat's official cause of death was listed as cardiac arrest, though the Palestinians claimed that Jaradat died as a result of torture. Israel says Jaradat's autopsy, which was carried out in the presence of a Palestinian coroner, revealed no signs of violence and that the trauma shown on his body, namely bruising on his shoulder, chest and elbows, and fractures of his right ribs, came from the medical emergency team's efforts to resuscitate him after he collapsed. Jaradat had been arrested last week for throwing stones at Israeli cars in the West Bank. Following the recent escalation in violence in the West Bank, the U.S. consulate in Jerusalem issued a warning to U.S. government personnel, temporarily limiting their travel to the West Bank and suspending travel altogether to the city of Bethlehem. U.S. citizens are advised to defer non-essential travel to and within the West Bank and to exercise an extra measure of caution during this period, the warning said. The U.S. Consulate General takes this opportunity to remind U.S. citizens that demonstrations, even peaceful ones, can turn violent with little or no warning. Meanwhile, Israel's Secretary of Defense Ehud Barak met this evening with senior security personnel, including Commander-in-Chief of the IDF, Lieutenant General Benny Gantz, Israeli Prison Service Chief Lieutenant General Aaron Franco, and others to address the rising violence and to discuss strategies of how to best deal with the riots and calm the situation. The official said the goal of any possible security measures in the West Bank is to return the state of calm there while maintaining vital Israeli security interests. The Anti-Defamation League was not amused last night during a sketch at the Oscars featuring host Seth MacFarlane's film character Ted. During the sketch, Ted, who is a stuffed bear, tells actor Mark Wahlberg that if you want to work in this town, unquote, you have to be Jewish. The ADL said it was sad and disheartening that the awards show sought to use age-old anti-Jewish stereotypes for laughs. ADL National Director Abe Foxman said what McFarlane did at the Oscars was offensive and not at all funny, saying it only reinforces stereotypes which legitimize anti-Semitism. Foxman said for the insiders at the Oscars, this kind of joke is obviously not taken seriously. But when one considers the global audience of the Oscars of upwards of 2 billion people, including many who know little or nothing about Hollywood or the falsity of such Jewish stereotypes, there's a much higher potential for the Jews control Hollywood myth to be accepted as fact. A special Megillah reading was held this weekend in Israel celebrating the Purim holiday. The Institute for the Advancement of the Deaf and the National Religious Rabbinic Association, Sohar, joined together to hold a sign language Megillah reading for the deaf and hard of hearing. More than 600 people turned up at the Tel Aviv International Synagogue on Saturday night for the first time event where the Megillah was read aloud with a translator providing a simultaneous translation into sign language from a raised platform at the front of the synagogue. Rabbi Ariel Constantine, the founder of the synagogue, said that it was important on Purim to include all members of society in the Megillah reading. 
This unity is important, he said, and we can't have an element of society missing out on an important experience of the Purim holiday. So this was the motivation, he said, behind the Megillah Sign Language Initiative. And finally today, the women of the wall held their reading of the Megillah at the Western Wall without incident. The activist group who advocates for equal rights for women to pray at the Western Wall held the Megillah reading in Jerusalem this morning, Shushan Purim. The day Purim is celebrated in Jerusalem because it was a walled city. The reading was attended by about 100 participants. Just a few weeks ago, 10 women from Women of the Wall were detained for wearing traditional Jewish prayer shawls or talit as men do, which is not allowed at the site. However, this morning's event went smoothly and Women of the Wall Chairwoman Anat Hoffman said she hoped all future prayer services would pass as peacefully and that, quote, the police will act against extremists at the Western Wall and not against women praying together. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Monday, February the 25th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.